Okay, let's check the F controls tab under simpler. And for that, we'll turn it into a synthesizer. So I'm going to load anything. It doesn't even matter. Whatever. Uh, we're going to take just one cycle, one wave cycle. Let's turn off the snap. Let's loop it. There's a lot of cycles here. So let's just take one. Nice. And so now we got uh, just an oscillator. I just one waveform uh, cycling, looping. Excellent. Now down here, uh, we have common controls. We have the filter. This is a built-in filter. It's on by default on a low pass filter. So this is exactly like the filter, like the auto filter yeah, built in Ableton. F frequency resonance. Here's the filter types. We have a high pass, a band pass, band reject or notch filter, and a morph filter that can morph between a low pass to band pass, band pass to high pass, high pass to notch, and notch to low pass. Um, and we can also uh, turn on an analog circuit drive. Whoa, that's cool. So you can actually drive it a tiny bit with this uh, analog circuit algorithms. And here we can change the filter from 12 to 24. That's the slope, how steep is the slope. And we can see all this visually under the controls tab. Right here we have some basic controls on the LFO, but right now the NFO is not uh, routed to anything. So it doesn't really matter. And here we have the envelope, uh, attack, decay, sustain, release, and the uh, global volume. Uh, if we go to one shot, we don't longer have an envelope. We have a fade in and fade out. Uh, we can't, and we have transpose, same in the slice mode. Let's go back to class it. I'm going to go to controls. And here in the controls tab, we can visually see the envelope. Uh, we can also apply velocity to it, so it, it matters how strong I hit uh, the, the notes, uh, and it's going to open up the filter. And we can also have it key tracked, so when I go up, uh, it opens up the filter, go down, it closes the filter. <laughs> Uh, you can turn it off, uh, but key tracking is on by default. And here we have a filter envelope, so we can apply right here the amount. We can apply an envelope uh, to the filter, so now we can have it, for example, let's bring the attack. So now we can hear it open up. So attack, the case sustain, release. Um, you can change the curves here, which is unfortunate, but that's the, the curves, uh, this exponential curves of the envelope. So that's the filter envelope. Here we have the LFO. Uh, we can only route it to volume, uh, panning, pitch, and filter. Here we have the speed. We can also synchronize it to our BPM. Here we have the waveform types. Uh, and here on the top, we can add a tag so it fades in the modulation. You can also have key tracking. So as you go higher, it's faster. Very cool. Uh, and here you can also offset the starting point of the... Uh, LFO. So let's slow it down a lot. Let's slow down even more. So this is my starting point. You can essentially change uh, where the waveform starts from. And the retrig, uh, by default, um, the LFO will start from the same exact place. So let me actually go back to slow. So it's going to start from exactly the same place. Same note, same sound every time. If I turn off the retrig, the LFO is just going to run freely in the background and we're going to grab it whenever we play a note. So we can hear it change as I trigger it. So that's the retrigger. It can be useful for many things. You can even randomize here with the random. Let's do it fast. So can create some cool stuff. Uh, here in the main section, we have a pitch envelope. So uh, let's uh, let's go back to like uh, let's turn off the LFO. Let's open up the filter a tiny bit, so we can hear the pitch envelope. So let's apply pitch envelope. Here's the how many semitones. Let's do like twelve, and let's do like uh, we want it to come up. 
All right, we can have it going down slower. We can have it very uh, short. So that's it, uh, the pitch envelope, you can do some interesting things here. Fortunately, we can take the attack amount down. So we can maybe come from below. And now we can kind of come from kind of kind of like a vinyl uh, speeding up. Um, nice. Here we can also go to visualize the amplitude uh, envelope, uh, all the attack, decay, sustain, release. I wish we had the different curves, but we don't. And here we can also set for the envelope to loop so it can skip the sustain section. Let's bring the attack and release down. The decay and, uh, and release. And now we're just looping the envelope. We can have it loop by beats, sync it, so it also synced with whenever we play the transport. And just on trigger, where it just uh, go all the way, uh, attack, decay, release, skipping the sustain. So that's the all the modes of the envelope. Nice, down here we can pan it. Uh, we can spread it, and spread will uh, double the sound, uh, uh, duplicate the sound into two and uh, slightly delay between them to make it sound wider, kind of a stereo effect. Here we can randomize the panning with each new note. So every new note is gonna randomize the pan, and here we can decide on the velocity sensitivity. So by default, we have some um, uh, volume being uh, affected by the how strong we hit the note, or by the velocity. Let me remove the pitch envelope so we can hear it better and the randomized panel and we can increase sensitivity if you want a higher range or we can completely uh, turn it off so there's no uh, there's no sensi uh, velocity sensitivity here we can transpose and we can also detune so here we have the glide we have two modes of glide so first of all portamento uh, it's going to keep it polyphonic, so I can play polyphonic. Uh, but uh, it's also going to glide. Which is very cool. A uh, glide is going to turn it into monophonic, so we can only play in one note at a time. And also the main difference is, let me, uh, another difference, I mean, let me uh, extend this. Extend it even more so we can see it. So, um, so uh, glide is always going to continue from the same place. So we can see the playhead just continues the sample. And if I change it to uh, portamento, uh, it's going to start uh, the sample every time we trigger it from the beginning. With still uh, triggering. Uh, um, so uh, portamento might be very useful for uh, 808s if you want that uh, hit in the beginning every time the bass hit and you still want that glide uh, but just know that if you switch it to the glide mode it does turn it into monophonic and this is the time of the glide however much we want now a few uh, general things about the sample the, sam the simpler uh, you can right click on the sample display here you can manage the sample which will just open up the file manager uh, to the right and you can uh, switch it you can uh, uh, see where it is tells you where it is on your computer uh, and so on. Let's close this. You can show in browser also, so it's gonna jump to where it is in the browser. So let's say I'm here, show in browser, it jumps to where it is. Normalized volume is gonna uh, increase all the peaks to the maximum. So you saw it increased a tiny bit. Very useful for very quiet samples. We can crop the sample. So right now I, I am um, trimming it from the beginning and from the end. So if I don't need the rest, we can crop it and completely eliminate what we had there. And we can also reverse the sample right here. Um, so that's about it for the simpler, extremely powerful tool. Uh, just so you know, here's a trick. You don't really need to load the simpler. You just have to have an empty MIDI track. Make sure that you focus on drop an instrument or sample here, meaning the device view. If you don't, you can hit Shift Tab to switch between the two button views, and then just drop a sample down here. Automatically, by default, it's loaded up in Simpler. So that's Simpler. Um, use it, abuse it, 
uh, be irresponsibly creative. Catch you next time.